and uh, then open it up to Q&A after we look at a little student work and some admissions information. So I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. It's great to have a small crowd here to go through student work in the department. Um, as Eric said, my name is Scott Northrup. I, I'd like to tell you I'm also a CCS alum. I uh, went to school at CCS in the early 90s. Um, I actually started taking classes there when I was in grade school and I majored in fine art but I uh, focused in sculpture, printmaking, and there was no photography uh, at that time, but I kind of forged my own path by uh, exploring Super 8 filmmaking, analog, and beginning to work with video um, at that point. So I made a, a lot of films and I was fortunate to work with my instructors in both drawing classes and printmaking classes and sculpture that allowed me to pursue what I really wanted to do with film, video and performance, uh, which turned into installation work and drawings and, and uh, photography and, and uh, filmmaking. So I am currently the director of digital film and photography at the college. I uh, recently uh, assumed some responsibility with the photography department, which is a natural fit with filmmaking, um, especially since so many photographers need to understand how to work with digital video professionally. So it's essential. Uh, and there's lots of great crossover that's starting to happen between those areas and cross disciplinary skills are super, super vital. So moving a bit over here to overview. Um, so the digital film program is rooted in historical, theoretical tech and technical explorations of digital media while looking ahead to continually evolving industry. Students make narrative, documentary, and experimental works while developing personal storytelling aesthetics and vision. So you can see here a list of areas of focus and emphasis. There's narrative filmmaking, so storytelling. Think of like three act structure, Hollywood filmmaking or independent filmmaking, but a clear story is being told, fiction. Documentary filmmaking, working with the real world finding stories in the world and intriguing people and events uh, that could be doc uh, documentation of a live event that's happening now, like this summer with Black Lives Matter and people out in the streets and really engaging with community. And that's really exciting as a, as a filmmaker. Um, and then experimental filmmaking, which really spans the gamut and it crosses over with narrative in terms of experimental narratives where you're playing with ideas of narrative but maybe exploiting character in interesting ways or turning the narrative on its head and, and rearranging everything. So if you're familiar with um, French New Wave cinema from the 60s, you might not be, but you'll, you'll learn it through the program. Um, there, Jean-Luc Godard said that every film had a beginning, middle and end, just not always in that order. And I think that that's a really important thing to keep in mind as we're thinking of new ways to tell stories and engage. Um, students also focus in cinematography, sound design, storytelling and screenwriting nonlinear editing, which is digital editing, production design, visual effects and motion graphics, and performance studies. Um, and also niche things that pop up. I had a film student that started focusing in VR work um, through my experimental classes, and that led to some really engaging work that was interactive storytelling in the uh, VR space. So we're open to a lot of explore, exploration, experimentation, and since digital film is a part of entertainment arts, which is also animation, game, and concept design, and now with photography, there's lots of crossover with uh, collaboration with students and people jumping in on each other's uh, projects and crewing for each other and getting a lot of hands-on experience. It's a very hands-on program. You are making films from your first year. Um, some film schools, if you've looked into others, a lot of them, you might be doing history and theory for a couple of years before you actually get into using equipment. We kind of learn, bring all that together, kind of a holistic way so that you're learning all of it at the same time. And in my experimental class, for instance, in the sophomore year, we start from a historical perspective, but within the first week you're making a film and you're jumping in and reacting to ideas and playing with aesthetics and concepts and taking all the technical skills you have and putting them to new uses. If I'm talking too fast, Eric, please stop me because I just get going. Okay, I'm gonna jump ahead here to facilities. You can see this photo of some of our lighting equipment there and stage and some tripod bags in the back. Um, film students have access to all of campus facilities, including their stage in the Walter Reed Ford second building. That space has four, it's a quadrant space with divided by curtains. We have a white cove with a sweep in it for a seamless edge. We have three black spaces where lighting can be hyper controlled. There are lights in that space and you can check out additional lights and equipment. All equipment is available for three day checkout for free, which can be extended uh, for special circumstances. There are, um, oh, there's a typo in the 
PowerPoint, how depressing. Anyways, it says sooties at the end instead of sweets. Uh, but all of this equipment is yours to use as a student. Um, we have cameras, lights, uh, camera rigs, uh, sound equipment, and everything you need to shoot with. The, we also have a green screen stage in the lower level. We have, uh, with, for VFX and compositing, we have a sound booth with full uh, Foley in the, built into the floor. So if you wanted to get someone walking on rocks or walking on wood chips or different surfaces, we have that there. We also have a whisper room, which is mobile. And a whisper room is completely soundproofed. It's perfect for audio recording. You get good, clean voice. And that also can be taken out of the sound booth. So if someone's recording in there, you can record with other equipment in the whisper room somewhere else. So it's, it's good, dual duty. We also have a stereo mixing suite and a Dolby 5.1 and 7.1 surround mixing suite. And then there are private video editing suites as well downstairs. So all of that is yours to use, but so is the glass shop. And um, also in my experimental class, we, make, we go to the glass shop and we work with the glass students in the crafts department and we make our own really crude lenses. And then we use those lenses to shoot with. And then we take the lenses and the stuff we've shot and we have these films now that we interact with and create maybe performative installation pieces, temporal works, sculptural pieces, and leaning into performance and interacting at a, a lo-fi level instead of you know, the hi-fi level of VR, let's say, but lo-fi interaction of audience interaction. So there's lots of crossover that happens. Um, advertising is an area that a lot of film students look at also as potentially a minor. Same with photography. Um, but then there's students who have minored in fibers because they want to make their own costumes and make, uh, I had a student make a chroma key dress for her junior film so that the, the character was constantly evolving as the story moved on. It was really exciting. Um, this is uh, some examples of community engagement and sponsored projects. Um, We've done things with Ford Motor Company and Girl Scouts of America. My students worked together to uh, conceptualize, shoot, and uh, do all the post-production work on a seven-part series of women in design. It was made for Girl Scouts of America by Ford Motor Company to get young girls interested in design as a career. And uh, it was a very successful series that Girl Scouts, uh, that, sorry, Ford hosted on their website for Girl Scouts over the course of, I think, 14 weeks, an episode every two weeks. And we worked with uh, designers at Ford Motor Company and also CCS students who were studying design so that we got to have some of that critique involved in that. And the whole process from being a student to being a professional was uh, displayed in this piece. We also worked with the Honda, I'm sorry, with Honda and the Indy 500. Our students made documentary of students designing the Indy car of the future. So this was 2015 car they were aiming for. And we, this was made in 20, uh, 2006, I believe. 2007, so it was ahead of the time. Um, and then that piece, that documentary piece aired on ESPNU, which is their university program. We also work with the Ruth, Ruth Ellis Center, which is in Detroit, and it is a place for at-risk youth. It's a great outreach center that really does save lives. Uh, my students have worked with them in making both uh, documentary pieces, uh, documentary fashion shows and other events that they have and also just what's going on at the center and how they can help the community. So some of that gets used for their PR, some of it's used internally just for the, the kids that are there to have some documentation of things they're doing. Um, and then also it can help with fundraising for that space, which is really exciting for us to be able to give to the community in that way. We've, as you can see, are also Henry Ford Innovation Institute. My students worked with their Innovation Institute to create in-house training videos. So this was for robotic surgery and laser surgery. And the students were there in the operating room being able to document this and experience this and create training videos for the med students. Um, and with General Motors, just uh, I think it was a year or two ago, my students created a series of commercial spots completely rebranding every GM line. So looking at each one and deciding how to connect with a younger consumer like your age. And so that was also a really great process. And then one of them was chosen to use as a model piece that GM was then using internally and also was um, shared with the North American Auto Show when it was in town. This is a huge list of internships. So I think internships are fantastic. They can definitely give you a head start in your career. Um, a lot of internships lead to jobs, first jobs for a lot of my students with these companies. And some of them are just great to have on your resume, 
great little footnote to say I've worked with you know partisan pictures. I've worked with Sony or um, the Ann Arbor Film Festival, Ford. Uh, Sue Marks is an amazing Oscar-winning documentary who lives here in town. She's in Birmingham, uh, and she's been really generous with her time with my students, uh, working with interns, and also coming to campus, doing critiques, and spending time in uh, the documentary class. Uh, Woodward Original is a local production house. They do mostly commercial and documenta documentation. Art Media Austria is a full service multimedia company that an exchange student I worked with was able to, he came to CCS for one semester with me and focused in video production, which he had never done before. He had a music background and graphic design. And uh, he ended up with one of the strongest reels that semester. And when he got back to Austria, he applied for this internship and got it which has actually led to a full-time job for him. He's working there now and uh, having a great time. He's uh, one of their creatives. Creative Time is a really fantastic arts organization in New York City. They've been around for over 30 years. I had students intern with them and the internships ended early so that they could hire them on as full-time employees. The same thing happened at uh, Maisel's Films, Crush Media Management, Rashad Newsom, who's a contemporary artist that also produces uh, music video and other performance work. Um, and actually the same thing has happened with almost all of these companies. Uh, my student Lonnie, who just graduated a year ago, got a summer internship at Minefeld I helped her with. Uh, that turned into a full-time job by fall. And she's having a great time there. And they're letting her explore other things besides just commercial work. So she's able to do video installations, uh, projections on buildings downtown and uh, mapped pieces to the architecture. So really exciting stuff. And she's having an amazing time. The great thing about internships too that I don't think I mentioned is they can be done for school credit. So a nine hour a week internship can be done for three hour, three credit hours. And that could be um, an elective credit. So there's so many electives you get to take as a student, each of them being three credits. So an internship can replace two of those. You could do up to six credit hours of an internship. So you could do two different companies over semesters, or you could do more of a like 20 plus hours and do a one internship for six credit hours. We can always talk about that if you have questions, feel free to ask me. But that's fantastic because doing that as a student, you get that professional feedback on your own work and you're working on professional jobs, sometimes with clients, sometimes in-house productions, but really great stuff and experience you don't necessarily get all the time in the classroom, even though we are very hands-on. Um, if you have questions about internships, ask me toward the end of the presentation or put it in the chat and we'll come back to it. These are some examples of some really successful alumni. Many of these just in recent years. Um, Maria Lienders is in Germany right now, working with Media Group RTL. Uh, she's having a fantastic time. That also started as an internship. She had family in Germany and went to visit and decided to apply just uh, in her senior year on spring break. And she was offered a intern position to start that summer and was hired in full time within a month. And she is one of their on-air producers. She works in their documentary division. As a student, she made fashion films and really amazing short documentaries, but her experimental work was just incredible. And she's still doing that on the side. So having full-time job in a more commercial area is able, allows her to make the work she wants to make on the side as well and pursue her arts career as well. So a lot of my students do both like fine art and commercial work and the blending of the two is really exciting because people that have a really incredible vision as, a, as an artist of the medium tend to get more eyes on their work, more excitement and that does lead to paying jobs. Um, I don't think that that connection is always made, but uh, filmmakers are working in all areas of the industry. So not just in film specific in Hollywood, but locally commercial studios, um, I have former students who are working for Netflix. There's, they're in a couple shows down in Atlanta. Um, some other students in Atlanta who are working for smaller production companies. Cinematographers out in LA, I think Alex is, yeah, Alex Grossfeld's mentioned on here. He um, shot part of American Horror Story a couple years ago. He's one on their camera team. He also um, worked on the Disaster Artist film, Ingrid Goes West, and a bunch of TV series right now. He's been in production just constant back to back. Dan Casey uh, wrote Kin in 10 Cloverfield Lane and F9, which is the next Fast and Furious film that's coming out. Um, he's also been a script doctor for many years. He graduated in 2006. Um, Mike Omoro is someone you might wanna look at. Look up M99 Studios. As a student, Mike was really into music video and um, cars actually. And he made some, uh, 
some okay stuff, but he got, when he took uh, an experimental class and an interdisciplinary studio with me, he really started to explore the medium and do some things that he never would have done before, uh, working with different materials, exploring uh, analog film as well. I, I do independent studies in analog film, so if anyone wants to do that, we can. Um, but he started his own production company. So he got an internship as a student for credit in summer in LA. He made a bunch of connections, came back his senior year, finished up here, followed up with those leads he got while he was living in LA and um, got an internship as soon as he started, a paid gig out there. And uh, he, within six months, I remember he was texting me saying, I think I just got to go for it and, you know, take everything I've done in school and put it toward my own success. And he started M99. Um, and if you are a fan of any kind of contemporary music, you know who Megan Thee Stallion is, her recent SNL performance, Mike did all of the visual work for that. So if any of you saw that performance, it was kind of amazing, really graphic video presentation. Um, and he works with all of the hot artists right now. He was featured in Forbes magazine last year as a designer changing the face of hip hop. So it's a complete visual design company that he's created on his own and immensely successful within, I think, just three years. Um, Steve Smith is another student who started his own studio. Um, he got a job at school working for Conan O'Brien, actually, doing his digital media work for the website and some for TV broadcast on TBS. He did some editing for TBS on um, sitcoms and other shows. And on the side, though, he was working with smaller music artists and creating short films and creating music videos. And I don't know if any of you know who Tim and Eric are, if you know the Tim and Eric show, but that was a goal of his was to meet them and work with them one day. And they actually come to him now to have stuff made for them, uh, which is really exciting. And he also does a lot of work with Adult Swim and um, uh, he just released some really crazy videos this summer. Check him out as well. Steve Smith, fantastic. Um, Chelsea does documentary work. Derek works at Sony Music. He's doing a Prince documentary right now. He did David Bowie and Metallica recently. Leah and Andy are both out in LA uh, with Fuse, Fuse FX and Flavor doing VFX work, um, as is Martin Toby Watson. Um, Martin was my student my first two years teaching at CCS. This is my 15th year. Uh, so Martin came to visit my studio in the sum, in the sorry, the spring this past year when we were online because of COVID. And he zoomed with us and he gave this really amazing talk of his career starting in my junior class and how that led to his career now. He works for Crafty Apes at this time, as well as four other international VFX studios. Um, his credit list is amazing from Marvel films to Game of Thrones. Uh, he's an award-winning VFX artist, Oscars, Emmys, etc. As a student, he his senior film was a CG environment with live action actors that he composited to tell the story of a lonely janitor. Um, and that really got him his first work out of school. So um, I'll, I'm gonna talk about curriculum in a second, but it was really great to hear his story and just really inspired the current students. And then Katrina Kasmer is VP of Production and Development at Vindivona. She's worked at a, several companies out in LA and she's been with Vindivona for a, a number of years now. Um, she's just doing great. She always, uh, actually everyone checks in with me when they're in town, we're like a little family. And another amazing thing about my alumni is that when recent alums, so my recent graduates move out to LA, I just drop them a note and they'll meet with people. They, a lot of my current, like not current, but recent grads got their first jobs because of previous alumni. So it's a really great network of people that support each other, give honest critique and farm jobs out to each other when they know like, ah, oh, this person would be amazing at this. And here's a really great person that they should get to know. And those connections are just incredible, just absolutely incredible and generous people. So um, I think that's a fantastic thing about a school like CCS and this program. Uh, currently, there are approximately 70 film students. Uh, there's a little over 20 first year students, which is kind of incredible. But we're in smaller groups. Uh, classes typically are around 15. They're very hands-on. So when we do crew projects, it's really easy to work with each other and collaborate. And um, everyone seems to build a nice bond in that first year that continues. And, there's great um, critical, but nurturing experience as a team. So that's a fantastic thing. Um, before we talk about admissions, I wanna jump over. I don't know if any of you have seen this reel and I apologize if it is going to lag, but let's give it a shot. Give me one second. 
Can we see that okay? Somebody give me a thumbs up or something? Yes. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> okay, this is um, a recent film reel showing student work. This reel is a little over a minute, but it includes narrative work, experimental and documentary. Um, I think there's some installation work in this reel as well and some VFX you'll see. Okay, hopefully that played okay without too much lag. Um, the internet's been a little wacky today. So that, like I said, incorporated a broad scope of work from across the department. The last piece with the woman making plantains um, was a from a documentary, from my documentary class. And that film won um, Best of Puerto Rico in a, in a film festival in Puerto Rico that year. Uh, the, the filmmaker, uh, that is his girlfriend's grandmother in the film. And she tells a really interesting story about her life and coming to the United States. So it's a really personal story about immigration. And uh, it got picked up for this festival in Puerto Rico and he won their top prize as a great example of the country, which is fantastic. So that was really exciting. Um, Eric, do you wanna jump in a little bit here? Oh, I was gonna jump in and tell you, I, first of all, I wanted to apologize because when you went to video, it kicked me out of my controls and oh. I could mute and tell you that I could see your screen. But in fact, I could only see my screen and not yours at the time. So thank you, Dana. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that you're here this evening. <laughs> jump in there and cover for me. Um, I also wanted to let you know that the um, video sound was uh, kicking in and out. There's okay optimization uh I'm trying to think where it is yeah i had i had it on but you had it on okay yeah. sabrina played one in an earlier presentation the same thing happened uh, yeah because i know okay. i'll put a link i'll put a link in here for everyone they can check it out if it didn't play go. correctly that would be that would be fantastic um what do you want me to segue into covering the uh the web uh, pages and talk a little bit about admissions. Um, yeah, I, I was wondering though, with the, the students that are here, prospective students, um, would anyone like me to go over curriculum, kind of explain what classes are, what that looks like as a, like a chart? You can, uh, you can unmute your, yes, they said yes. Yes, yes? okay, great. Um, I'm gonna share my screen again then. Okay, is that clear there, Eric? Yes. Okay, so this is a sample curriculum. This is what the admissions, um, sorry, the advising department works with when they're working with you and scheduling. But um, I also work with all the film students in kind of taper, tapering the um, curriculum to them, sorry, tailoring the curriculum to you. Some students wanna do specific things, like I said, and I like to work with you to do that. And as a smaller independent college, we can do that. So. Um, whatever we can do to get those cross-disciplinary skills in there for you and help you find your passion, that's what I'm here for. So having said that, the first year 
is foundations year. So you're taking classes across the college. I will say, if you're coming in next year, this first year is gonna look slightly different. There will not be a, a drawing requirement for film students next year. That instead will be an imaging making class that's a lot broader and gets into cameras and such earlier. Um, so that's cool. We're also bringing in 2D and 3D and 4D design in a new way so that you get a taste of some AR and VR in your first year, which could lead to some really interesting, exciting storytelling later on, kind of like I was mentioning about that student I worked with. But in the first semester, you would take a class called Creative Visualization. This class is pre-production from ideation of characters and story to short form screenplays, to storytelling and other media, sto a quick storyboarding process, editing, and in the end, you create an animatic with full sound design, which gives the timing of your film and what it would look like, blocking for the actors, et cetera. Second semester, you jump right into intro digital filmmaking. Um, also at this time, either fall or winter, you will take a lighting class that is lighting specific. So it gives a really intense um, introduction to camera and lights. Intro digital filmmaking will build on that and get into storytelling and working with nonlinear editing systems, mostly Premiere right now, um, as that has become both a student favorite and a much more popular industry with um, full features and TV shows being edited in it. So some of you might already work with that, which is great, but you'll get a good taste of that. Um, so you'll finish foundations that first year and then you're gonna jump into a lot more film courses. So we've got 2D digital animation one, which is After Effects, which gives us motion graphics and introduction to compositing and type animation. So if you're thinking about your title design, really incredible job to have as title designer. A lot of that comes from experimental thinking. So that is a required course as is sound design one, intermediate digital filmmaking, which is going to take everything you've learned in intro and lighting and the creative visualization class and start putting that toward bigger productions, working with higher end equipment. Um, as I mentioned, we have that amazing equipment checkout. So you'll get to work with all of the stuff we have there and learn the different rigs from glide cams to cranes to uh, Ronins and everything in between. Um, and that will then, gesture drawing is on here. That is usually replaced with a photography class to balance better. Um, this will be updated soon. There's been some changes since this uh, was published last year. In the uh, second semester of your sophomore year, experimental filmmaking, DMA 345, is a class I teach, and that is your core studio for the semester. In that class, I'm going to assume because you've taken these other courses in video production and technology that you know these things, and I'm going to kind of like crumple all that up and start over with your brain and start making more emotion work that explores personal experience, explores the medium, um, pushes the edges of what you can do with um, image manipulation, installation. Some students start playing with performative things with uh, live performance and electronic, uh, electronic and digital installation and sculpture as well. Um, there is an advanced section of 2D digital animation too, which is for film students required. That class goes heavier into compositing. It's, so it's After Effects based building on number one, but introduces Cinema 4D and Nuke. So you get into node-based compositing and a lot more detailed compositing. I don't know if you, in the reel I just showed, if it played well, there is about the middle point, a ghost and the sheet gets pulled off and then there's no one there. It's a very quick cut uh, that was made in that class. And it's a great little effect shot. Also in that year, there's three suggested um, electives here, but there's a lot more to choose from. These are just the most common ones that film students use. The playing the self class I want to point out as it's a, an odd name. Um, and it's an interdisciplinary studio that most of the film students do take while they're at CCS, but it's open to the entire college. So it's a wide mix of students and everyone works in their own media. So most film students make films the whole semester, but there might be communication design students that are creating posters and zines and, and different kind of work, but people tend to start blending and collaborating and creating hybrid work, which is really exciting. There is one film specific piece and there's one writing piece and the rest of it is exploratory on bigger ideas. And that class looks outside the classroom a lot. So we're looking at the real world. We're looking at things that are happening outside of the classroom, not the safe bubble that we're in, in a classroom on campus. Um, and then there's also experimental animation, 3D computer graphics. So if you're interested in VFX, I would push you to take more CG courses. In the sophomore year, we, I'm sorry, the junior year, we come back and we jump into 
narrative filmmaking one in the fall, narrative two in the winter. That, so that's kind of like one class that spans two semesters. And we do some technical exploration, some film criticism, screenplay writing, and creating a, producing a proof of concept in narrative one. In the winter, we take that screenplay and we produce it working with full cast. We do casting calls sessions. We work at SAG-AFTRA, which is the actors union to work with professional actors for free, as long as we follow those policies and work with the, in their contracts. Um, at that same time, you would be, so we got a full production by the end of that year and much higher polished work than you've been doing in the first two years. The, um, there's also opportunity in the junior year to take documentary or experimental too. So if experimental was really intriguing, jump in experimental too, and that's gonna go a lot further into uh, performative works and film as an art form, um, as opposed to, so as a visual medium, as opposed to storytelling necessarily. Documentary works with the real world. It's a, a film that engages with what's happening outside. Right now that class is working on social documentaries. So they're looking at things that really matter to them and how can they make a film that engages with that and ex exposes that to other people. Um, there's an open elective that semester, and that could be a film course, or like I said, you might have wanted to do more with glass blowing or advertising or, or photography. We figure that out. I'll work together with you to figure that out. History of film and business practices round out the liberal arts for that year. Sorry, that semester. Second semester with narrative two, you'll take either sound design two or another elective that is of so if sound wasn't really your thing and there's other direction you want to go maybe deeper into VFX or something. Talk about that. That could also be an internship, like I mentioned, or a independent study. If there was a project you wanted to pitch, you would pitch that to me and we would decide, is that a valuable project for a full semester? Um, advanced story concepts is a class that works on ideation toward your senior year, because senior year, there's no assignments in senior production studio. You create your schedule. So everything you've been doing for three years kind of culminates in this personal body of work. And that's a two semester process for a senior production studio in the senior year. Alongside that, currently there's a class called Professional Futures One and Two. Those courses offer a little more studio time for your thesis because making films is a lot of, a lot of time and energy needs to go into that. Uh, so we give you a little extra studio, but it also reinforces what we did in the junior year. In the Narrative Two class, we also work on your professional development. So we do your resume or a CV, we cut demo reels, we make real breakdowns. Uh, I have you write cover letters toward real world jobs and the potential of getting a summer internship for credit or just for the experience and pay. Um, so we work on that and then refine that in the senior year and create your digital presence and make sure you're able to go out there and get jobs and work. You know, that's what's the most important thing. When we're at that point, everyone's worried, like all the seniors right now are, are thinking, what's, what's gonna happen next? And some great opportunities have already popped up for people. So that's, that's amazing. Um, and then there's more electives in that year. I sometimes in working with students and catering to your uh, needs and your interests, sometimes move some of those electives up and shuffle some of the required courses around just where it makes sense so that you're not missing out on anything and you're staying up to date with everything you need to know to be able to get to junior and senior studio. Um, and then there's other electives in other areas. Like I said, minoring in another department is just five classes. So uh, five three credit courses for 15 credits and they're, those electives open are built into the film curriculum. So it's not extra semester you're spending there. It's already built into your studies. And I think that is everything, Eric. And if you wanna, talk about some admission stuff and then we can open it to questions. Your mic is off. Your, your mic is off, Eric. Like I've done a million of these. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, I don't wanna chew up a lot of uh, anybody's time with this. Um, I did mention in the chat box that I am more than happy to linger later um, after we let Scott go. If you all have admissions and portfolio specific questions, I don't want him to have to sit through that. But uh, in just a moment after we cover this, um, you know, we'll open it up to program specific questions that you might have for Scott. I just wanted to share uh, our website with you for a moment for those of you who haven't had a chance to explore or who are thinking possibly of making application. Uh, I wanted to be sure you knew how to navigate your way around and find the information you may be looking for. 
Uh, so if you are interested in applying to CCS, uh, you want to go to admissions and to undergraduate admissions and click on that. Uh, once you've done that, making application to the school literally is as easy as one, two, and three. There are three buttons here uh, as you scroll down. The first one is the application button. And our application is free. There is no application fee to apply to CCS. Uh, you would only need to, after you've submitted your application, request transcripts. Uh, so this will take you to the link for parchment, which is a way in which you can request transcripts digitally, but you may also request them through Clearinghouse. Uh, some schools will email transcripts directly to us, and you want to use this email address. Um, we are able to work with unofficial transcripts, so if you don't want to you know, put down money to find out if you've been admitted or to find out what you are, if you're a transfer student, what courses may transfer. Uh, you're welcome to send us unofficial transcripts and you can send them also to this email address. Just make sure that your name is on them, the school's name is on them, and an accumulative GPA. And be sure to uh, scan them and save them to a PDF and attach them to an email again to this address. So when you submit a portfolio, you'll be submitting it to a platform we use called SlideRoom. It's a third party portfolio service. And you're gonna just simply click this button and it will take you to SlideRoom where you'll register an account. Uh, you'll um, select either your transfer student or a freshman applicant. And you'll upload eight to 12 images. Now these may include uh, video files uh, there may be some restrictions on the file size. Um, Slide Room will give you the specifications and they do have a help desk. So if you have any questions, you can uh, refer to them. Uh, we do ask that if you're spitting uh, film work that you identify you know, what portion you had worked on uh, for that film. Uh, you may have just uh, done the cinematography, you might have done screenwriting, um, you might have done it all. Uh, so there will be a box where you can give us context, you can give us uh, background information on what uh, portion of that film you had had hand in. Uh, so that's kind of important. It's super uh, important. I just want to emphasize that. That's super important to understand what you're coming with. Exactly. And uh, you can also put still images. There can be still photography. You know, what we're looking for is not that you are necessarily an accomplished filmmaker. We're going to get you there. Um, but we're looking for fundamental skills that really transcend all majors. So, you know, we're looking for composition, you know, how you use uh, the camera, panning in, panning out, looking up, looking down, and how that drives the narrative in your story. Uh, we're looking for uh, concept and story. Narrative is really big. Uh, and that can be in still photography just as much as it can be in uh, motion capture film. Uh, all right, uh, so that is the admissions page. There is a couple more things I want to show you here. There is information on portfolio, whoops, portfolio requirements. So if you click on this button here, there will be a, a short video by Brandy Keeler uh, who will provide some excellent information, just general on what the portfolio may look like. Uh, and it, we do have portfolio requirements for majors classified by those that require maybe drawing, those that do not. And uh, they will have portfolio examples that you can look at just by clicking there. And your counselor, uh, whether it be myself for transfer or your freshman counselor that you'll be assigned to can also assist you with your portfolio. You can also submit uh, a portfolio here for uh, a review prior to submitting it on the slide room. So if you just want to get some informal feedback, that would be a good way to do it. And then as you uh, scroll down, there are additional tips and recommendations for the portfolio. So lots of information here on the portfolio. Uh, I also wanted to point out if you go to academics and you go down here to digital film, a lot of what uh, Scott had been sharing with us this evening, you're gonna find um, on the digital film landing page. 
Uh, you'll find out information about our esteemed faculty. Uh, we have a pedigree of faculty who are all working professionals who uh, are going to give you the tools, the skill sets, and uh, that connection uh, with industry that uh, you don't get at a lot of our institutional peer schools. Uh, departmental videos, uh, their student work. Uh, but, you know, I like to say proof is in the pudding. This is the pudding right here on their profiles. Uh, so this is uh, a lot of the alumni that Scott had spoken about earlier. Uh, you can go back and review where some of our graduates are working and what they're doing. Uh, so that is uh, something that you may want to look at later when you have an opportunity. And um, if you want to look at your own copy of the curriculum guide that uh, Scott had shared with us, you just click on curriculum, scroll down, keep moving this box, and you click on digital film, and there it is. It's the four-year, eight-semester sequence of courses and um, I also use this for any of you that may be transfer students, if you are transferring any coursework from other institutions, including general education or liberal arts coursework. Uh, we have 42 semester credit hours of gen eds. Those usually show up um, in years uh, three and four and five and six. Um, but um, this is what I use. I just highlight the course that you, you anticipate you're receiving credit for, yellow. Anything left white would be the courses you would have remaining to take with us to receive your Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. Um, we can go into more detail about that. Uh, if you guys want to hang on, we can talk about that after we uh, let Scott go. And we, if anybody's interested in talking a little bit more about the admission requirements or portfolio. But uh, that's there for you to refer to. One last thing I wanted to point out, and that is, I'm moving this box. If any of you would like to visit the campus, we are doing some in-person uh, tours of campus. Uh, because of the pandemic, we are socially distancing, and some of those tours have been booked out until January and February. So you may not be able to get a live tour until then, but if you contact us, uh, we can put you on the list to get you scheduled as soon as they're available again. But we do have virtual tours, uh, which you can also uh, schedule. And we, we basically do that. Um, uh, somebody's you know taking a camera and they're, they're taking you literally on a virtual tour. And we have a virtual tour set up that you can take just simply by clicking this button here. And you can go from building to building and see the facilities. Uh, and I think that's about all I have to share with you. Scott, you got me talking really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I zoomed through that quicker than I normally do. Um, hopefully that. Right. <laughs> what, did you say something? Uh, hopefully that all made sense. Yeah, totally. I think it did. OK, good. Uh, so, uh, I want to open things up to uh, Q&A. I am going to um, While Eric gets that together, I just want to mention, Eric mentioned uh, the faculty are working in industry.